All right, we are now recording and welcome to the upper room where we live on the breath of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Teach others to Amen. do the same by our witness to so everything we do, think, feel, yeah. act, say, is all about being led by the Holy Spirit. So, yes, I am going to mute a few people. Um, let's see. It's actually one person else is still okay. I just need to mute for the um, recording purposes. Okie dokie. Not that I don't love you, because I do. All right. So there we go. There we go. All right. And wow, we're so full today. Praise God. Here we go. Um, Robin. Robin, great to see you again. Kind of see you. I see that you're on. <laughs> uh, Cindy, thanks for popping on. We're going to be praying for uh, this specific, hi, Robin. We're going to be praying for that specific thing. We just got finished, Robin. Make sure you listen on in. We have just finished a, uh, an amazing conference. Uh, people were, um, if you, if some people say you're activated in the gifts. Others say you, there's an impartation of the gifts. There is anointing. There is healing. There was um, freedom. There's liberation for people who are carrying junk um and that's so powerful whenever god just comes in with his presence and does that can you look at the light just a text i see this reflection right here more and 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 good i think so i'm going to be sharing a lot about that and we're going to pray the unity prayer for our prayer protection that's an eight line prayer i was going to pop it up didn't have some time but we'll get through it. Um, I'm going to, does somebody have that up? I can uh, spotlight on you and we can do it. Otherwise I can find it myself online. I should have had it. Um, so eight line prayer. It's uh, Jesus told Elizabeth Kindleman, it would blind Satan. Hallelujah. So oh, that's what we're going to do. And our topic today, this is really important. I just got finished praying um, for a visionary who on the phone just a little while ago. And um, the Lord showed this amazing and beautiful vision. And I just want to share uh, that vision because it's applicable to all of us. And it's about where our gaze is. And if your gaze is off of Jesus, uh, just return quickly. Don't bad mouth yourself. Don't self legend. Don't, don't get mad. Don't get frustrated. Uh, that's the language of the enemy. And he wants you to use that language. Let's not feed him what he likes. Let's cut off his oxygen supply. And let's just join in the united body of Christ in training our gaze, okay? Ooh, I'm feeling that. I hope you are too. That's a discernment marker when you get thinking, I'm going to put the spotlight on uh, Kathy here, I think, and you'll be able to see um, the, uh, the prayer right there. I think, there we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pray it now. It's an eight-line prayer promised to move it a little to your left because we're seeing a reflection on your phone there you go up a little bit more poor thing she just had surgery i'm telling hey get hey, uh, there you go perfect <laughs> all right let us all begin in the name of god the father and in the name of god the son and in the name of god the holy spirit amen <sighs> my adorable jesus may our feet journey together May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. And may our glances profoundly penetrate each other. And may our lips pray together to gain mercy from the eternal Father. Amen. In the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want you to know why the um, what's actually happening <laughs> that during that prayer time. I'm going to try to take Kathy off the. Uh, there we go. Um, my, my adorable Jesus, may our uh, feet journey together. Okay, that's you doing it with Jesus, right? Right. I love when I see Diane say Amen. Come on, sing it to the choir, girl. And so, and then the next line is, my adorable Jesus, may our, that's, that's Jesus and you, gather in unity. 
So that actually lines up very, very well with divine will and Luisa Picaretta, right? In, in Luisa Picaretta, it says, um, a divine will, uh, hold in my holding, blink in my blinking, eat in my eating, walk in my walking, okay? So it's so beautiful because the Holy Spirit does not contradict itself, all right? He has to line up, all right? So this is a powerful and beautiful thing. All right. Now, so um, someone who's just popping on, I'm just going to say that we just got finished doing our prayer protection. There's many ways that we can protect ourselves in prayer. The unity prayer is one of them. Okay. And then we also talked about the one that I have put up um, over and over again. And that's uh, this one here. And it's talking about the, the power of the precious blood, the uh, intercession of the mantle of Our Lady just covering us, intercession of St. Joseph, the holy angels of the war. And we speak spiritual blindness. Did you know that in the name of Jesus, God has positioned you to speak spiritual blindness and spiritual soundproofing upon the enemy? Did you know that? I've mean, met so many people who, it's okay for I'm going to use this. Thank you. And I've mean, met so many people who don't realize that the enemy is also trying to listen in on your conversation you think you're having a private conversation at home or on the phone or on zoom but the enemy goes around like a prowling line and so we want to do our part and we have this power in the name of jesus to shut him down cut him off at the knees by the name of jesus precious blood of our lord does that make sense really important because our team the upper room group, the prayer warriors, we're going deeper this season. The Lord has shown me that very clearly. We're going deeper in a more profound way. That irritates the heck out of the enemy. So he's going to want to try to throw some snares in. And this is what we're going to be addressing today. Some of those snares that he tries to throw in are um, busyness, okay? Busyness. If he can get you busy, and this is what he showed me when I was just praying over this visionary earlier, and that the um, I saw this little demon that's trying to, yes, thank you. I'm glad that you're getting that. I'm seeing the chat come on board. People are getting a deep breath. Uh, Cindy, it looks like you can't hear me. I see you typing. Can someone give her some advice on her end? As I move through teaching, I'm seeing Cindy popping on Cindy, and we're going to be praying for her. Somebody keep me on point on that for um, her sister as well. Um, I saw this little demon about this high, kind of like you would see um, almost on a cartoon, and it's carrying this fire with it. And it was wanting to distract this person, this visionary that I'm talking about, so that this visionary wouldn't go around. And the Lord gave me the word resurrecting souls. Uh, breathing life into them so this person i'm talking about goes around helping people and in the midst of helping them there's a resurrection that goes on within them new life fresh manna new wine that they're receiving that's the resurrection operating within that ministry that looks like just fixing someone's pipes just doing a little screwdriver but there is mighty work going on. So this demon doesn't want him to do this work. So this demon goes around and lights a fire over there and then lights a fire over there, tries to create family discord here and here. And so has this person who is on a mission to help resurrect souls through Jesus moving through him. And so he's trying to put out these fires. You see what I'm saying? That scenario is your scenario too. Listen to that carefully. Busyness. If you haven't heard it before, there is B U S Y. It's uh, there's an acronym that says being under Satan's uh, yoke. Yoke. Um, so now that's just the ploy. That's just the snare. And in the name of Jesus, it can just fall away. That's exactly right. Amen. Amen means it is so. It is done. So we're going to cooperate with um, Jesus and how he wants to use us by our gaze. 
here's another thing that happened uh, during that prayer time with that person. As that person was going around trying to put out fires, the Blessed Mother showed me to remind him to gaze at Jesus's heart. Now, here's the thing, though. Here is the awesomest thing, okay? Here's uh, the person wanting to gaze. Now, I'm doing, I'm a very visual person, and a lot of us, a lot of you guys are too. Our gaze needs to be on presence, not on the little fires that the enemy is doing. That's bound in the earth, right? Greater is the one who is in me than the one, little s-a-n, who is in the world, okay? He's been given a period of time to move around and torment souls, but it's a short period of time. It's getting shorter by the minute, okay? Ah, do you see that? If you look in their chat, I want to stop for a second. People are getting discernment markers, okay? And this is the conversation going on between you personally and the Holy Spirit. So when you see wind happening for Kathy, deep breath for Angela, God bumps, that's the GB, I believe. And you're hearing this, the breath moving through me. This is powerful. Don't you want to be in a conversation with heaven? Everybody say yes. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Okay, so then you need to learn that language. So if I travel to France, I'll begin to speak the language of the environment in which I am. I began to talk like this, you know, and I began to order a baguette with chocolate, you know, it's how we go. So, but I say it to you in English, I can say it in French, but you get the point. We need to speak the language of heaven. Now, not of the, the enemy. He needs food and he needs breath. So we're going to cut off his oxygen supply, which is the language of the world. It's actually link, his language, remember, because we're over here with divine will, human will, and enemy territory. He has the language and belief system, the world where we get to choose with our free will, which way we're going to go, is here. This is our free will, FW free will, and divine will it has its language and belief system. Okay. Are you, here's a, a powerful question. And Cindy, I want to make sure that you can hear me now. So if you pop that in, let me know you can or cannot hear me. Okay. Um, yeah, somebody's trying to help her out. Thank you. <laughs> Look, and Maria is getting deep, deep breaths. Okay, you're having a conversation personally with the Holy Spirit while you're with us. And then we are united having the same experience. Make sense? Okay, so language of the world. Okay, this is where the enemy tries to use confusion and chaos to throw you off course, okay? But the Lord has the opposite over here, which is wisdom and clarity. How do you not get caught up in this and have this gaze? Gaze. Ooh, who is coming up with an acronym for gaze? God's awesome. Help me out. You guys figure it out for yourself. But I'm sensing an acronym just building itself out right there. Um, as a language and a belief that are direct opposites of each other. Language of um, enemy territory, right? Okay. So language and belief is overarching here. It's very important. Belief. Okay, this overarching 
competitive. I'll say competitive just because it's a good way to. Uh, uh, and I, I like that. Carol Ann said, God's awesome zeal enabled. Hallelujah. Crazy Jesus. That's powerful. <sighs> How many of you got a deep breath on that? Huh? Because that's what's happening. We're coming into agreement. When we're into agreement with divine will, you will have the effects or fruit of being in agreement. As we cooperate and collaborate, this is our choice here. This is what opens the door right here. Cooperate and collaborate with the Holy Spirit. When people are getting ready to make a very breakthrough, it's so typical that you will go to a conference, have some amazing experiences, and go, oh my gosh, I'm so on fire for God. Go home, and there's a storm waiting for you. It's a, so typical. Let me just tell you whose fingerprints are on that. The enemies. He came with, these are his fingerprints, confusion and chaos, discord, discord, dysfunction. If you see that going on, especially after a conference, keep your gaze on him. Now, let me share what happened when I saw this vision. Once we, uh, this person had the established gaze on Jesus's heart. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the heart magnified and amplified. So the, the picture what I pictured, if you can, it was bright white light, brighter than like a fluorescent light. And then when the gaze occurred, all of a sudden it was even bigger. When the gaze decreased to the world and to the chaos and confusion, the light diminished. Now, we cannot take away anything from Jesus. He was just wanting to point out how powerful our gaze is. Are you with me on that? Also, Diane uh, had for gaze, God's assisting zealous evangelization. I love it. I just love it. So now the gaze needs a bit of training, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It does. It certainly does. Because have you ever gone and you're talking to someone and they're looking right through you or they're not with you? They're so not with you. They're on to their list in the back of their head. They're making me feel somewhat unimportant with whatever thing you got going on with you. And they're not present. Presence is important. And we got some more um, for gaze. We have grace, God's response among chaos and evil. Okay, so help me out with that. I see that what's going on there. Help me out just a little bit more with that so I can make sure I've got it all on where I need to see it. I can put it up here. All right. So do you see when you gaze, the light gets amplified. What happens if you're in front of light and it gets amplified? Hit it, Margie. Turn it on. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now my gate. She did not have wanted her to do. You know, you train these people. You know, you, know, you <laughs> offer them coffee and. <laughs> one job. One job. <laughs> oh no, it's it's for anybody, Robin. Not just you, sweetheart. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, and then when my gaze is elsewhere, hit it, Margie. See what happened? Okay. Same light, but if I train my gaze over and over, hit it, Margie. You see, you see, case in point. Okay, move it down just a bit. My highlights, I need to reach touch up. No, I'm kidding. Put it down just that. Perfect. So you get that. You get this by training your gaze. If you remember, um, the Lord gave me a message about five or six years ago. He said, train your gaze. Train your gaze on I who am the source of your strength, courage, and wisdom. And for if you do not train your gaze on me, you too, Vicki Smith, will get caught up in the chaos 
loose fingerprints and confusion that is to come. He didn't say it might come. He said is to come. That right after that, we had the COVID, we had all kinds of stuff and outbreaks, uh, war, et cetera. So do you see how important it is to train? Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> someone was complimenting my visuals. Not the prettiest thing in the world. However, I think you get the point. Spirit the message. Okay, so we need to train our gaze. So that's what happened. If you have the light, uh, if you have your eyes on the light of Jesus, the light of Jesus illuminates you, leaving no room for chaos and confusion, thereby shutting this door that was open when you were looking at it initially. Did you catch all that? Okay, yeah. So the light itself shuts the door because he, that is him. And that scriptural shuts the door, opens the door. Who knows that scripture? I bet Rebecca does. Isaiah 22, 22. Okay, the Lord is the one who opens the doors that no one can close and closes the doors that no one can open. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about conference, but I want to talk about how powerful Isaiah 22, 22 is. I spoke about it before, but it cannot be overstated. Wisdom bears repeating because when you're living by this and then applying it to your circumstances at home, prophetically speaking over the situation there is healing so let's apply this to someone who connected with me uh they heard me on uh you can put this down somebody on the, on the uh, chat they heard me on a radio program called touched by heaven so that you may remember that i was on there i don't remember my my episode number but um touched by heaven she heard that. Now, I made that over a year ago, but she heard it. Now, let's watch this open door by Jesus, okay? Now, watch how this is built out. Jesus is building a testimony here that once you see it, you can take it, own it, and live it. Because in the upper room, this is a lifestyle, okay? All you guys who are praying for me, thank you so, so much. I'm doing so much better. Thank you. I literally didn't think I could get on, but here I am. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is the door, okay, that the Lord opens. All right. Now, I have to put as, as an aside, the word of God is living and it's effective. So if you take this word of God, which is, I'm saying, word of God is living and effective. If you guys want changes in your life, this is how it's going to happen. Because at the end of this story, when I get through it, you're going to hear a healing has taken place. But I want you to see how God tees up the moment. Tees up the moment so that you can just hit it out of the park in his holy name, precious blood, and his promises. You with me? So Hebrews 4 says, the word, that's this word we're going to use here, the word is, okay, this is, there's no if, ands, or buts. It is living, and it is effective. So you have to keep your eyes trained on the promise so the enemy doesn't water down what you think you understand, okay? All right, so is, it's living. Just checking this out for a second. The word of God, Jesus, is inside of you. Yes? Amen. He's living in you. Yes? Yes. Yes. What he spoke 2,000 years ago is still living. It didn't die because he who spoke the word 2,000 years ago is in you, speaking that word through you. It's living. As a result of living, you have a heartbeat. How many heartbeats have you yes. had since we just got on? I'll say several hundred. It's a guess. Um, so you had renewal, renewal, renewal by divine will. New life, new life, new life. Breath, breath, breath. You getting it? You're with me on that? 
living and effective. I'm setting you up here. By the time I get over here, I'm going to have a miracle to tell you about. But I want you to watch the architecture, the logistics of how the Lord works. Okay? We need to know about the word. That means we need to become fluent in where to find the word. It's in scripture, obviously. You take which word the Holy Spirit tells you about, the second wisdom, track in with me. The Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom on which word to use. The word is a promise. The word is truth. And truth comes with the promise. I like it, Maria. See, the Lord is tenderizing your heart. She, her heart is beating faster as we speak truth. Because we, we're gazing here and it's illuminated bigger. Are you seeing that? You are having the effectiveness of hearing the word, training your gaze. Okay? If you, everyone gets distracted by our humanity, return quickly. That's it. Return quickly. That's all. Don't beat yourself up. Don't say, why do I always do this? I keep trying. I keep failing. I keep, I keep, I keep. That's your eyes right over here in confusion and chaos, dysfunction and discord. Doesn't it sound like that? Can't you hear the discord? Return quickly. Okay. Gaze back again. Now, the word is living and effective. So I take the word that the Holy Spirit put it out to me, which is a promise, which is truth and sets the captain free. Okay. <clears throat> A woman um, got diagnosed with cancer, okay? She heard she was seeking healing wherever she could find healing, seeking consolation wherever she could find consolation. She heard my testimony. It struck a chord within her, and she took a risk. She reached out. Most people go, I don't want to bother you. I know you're super busy. I don't know. Wouldn't it surprise you now I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs because everybody said I'm too busy to answer the door. No one's knocking because everybody thinks I'm so busy. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm just saying, let the Holy Spirit decide. He prompts you, please. I really am not twiddling my thumbs. Don't have time. But what I do work to do is listen to the Holy Spirit, who to call back, when to answer the phone, when to write, when to do, et cetera. Everything is about dependence on the Holy Spirit. Dependence. Okay. She gets diagnosed. She starts looking for healing. What do you know about promises? Seek and you'll find. She, I, I had my, I guess I had my email connected with it. She reached out to me. I said a prayer for her via the, the letter uh, that I sent back. And she asked, uh, and then I got on my heart. I was supposed to pray with her verbally over the phone. Okay. The Lord's one who opens the doors that no one can close. And he closes the doors that the enemy cannot open. So I take the word, which is, Lord, you're the one who opens the doors no one can close, closes the doors that no one can open. I take what he said here, Isaiah 22, 22. I apply it here, and I follow his lead. Thank you for opening up the door for the healing of this person, her uh, name begins with a C and closing the door on the enemy. Okay. Now, this is beautiful. Next thing that happens is we do connect. I told her, get on a plane, come to this conference now. She couldn't because <laughs> it was like 24 hours. That's okay because God is outside time. God is outside time. He knows her heart. He knows what she can and can't do. He's not going to punish her for not being here. He's going to create an open door. He's teeing it up again. All right. She, we get on the phone. She shares a little bit about her history, which is a trauma history. Many of you have trauma histories, as do I. But oh, guess what? What our God says, our Lord said, Jesus said, through his precious blood, I took care of all of it. Well, if he took care of all of it, 
how can some of us still sick? Some, okay. Some have some uh, organic reasons, generational things. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just saying, how come some of us are still suffering? There's a variety of reasons, but what we want to do is say, what do you tell me about the infirmity? I need discernment. What do you, what do you say? And so I started speaking about what God says about healing because I was led in that direction. Okay. Please don't not tell somebody to not heal because they don't have enough faith. That just crushes my heart. Please don't ever, ever, ever say something so cruel and hurtful. Okay. You need to hear because the Lord is a consoler. He's an encourager. He's a lover of hearts. He wants to touch every heart with great and unconditional love. Okay. Okay. I'm glad we got that established. Okay. Because God is love and, and he did things for us 2000 years ago so that we could be healed. Mind, body, soul, spirit, including generations. Okay. This is the New Testament. All right. So now it's living and effective. So we end up, I, I'm talking to her and I'm setting, helping her sex and journeying with her setting her gaze on Jesus more than the diagnosis of cancer. She was letting fear be her decision maker. Fear of not being with her kids. Fear of how long do I have? Fear of what does the next test take? Fear, fear, fear. Is it normal? Yeah, it's very normal. But as lovers, we help, we co-journey, we co-sojourn, we uh, co-labor with that soul. I say, here, let's look at this. I start talking to her. Now, very interesting. The night before, I went to uh, get edified in some way. And I listened to Chris Alar, Father Chris Alar's talk on St. Charbel. Okay, that's interesting, don't you think? So then I start talking to this soul about um, St. Charbel. I, I know just a little bit about it, but now I know a little bit more. She goes, oh my gosh, can't believe you're saying that. So you do see what God's doing here. She goes, I just started a novena to St. Charbel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got me. You're with me now. Okay. I just started Novena and I've ordered his oil. I said, so Father Chris says he has 29,000 medically documented miracles that have occurred with his intercession. 29,000. That's only the reported ones. What about the unreported ones? So I start, start talking about St. Charbel. And then I start speaking healing to her in the name of Jesus, eradicating the cancer. Now, can I just as an aside, I have found very frequently, not all, but very frequently, for those of you who are new, this is not new. <laughs> this is Holy Spirit, meaning I'm landing on a right point. I'm making, speaking truth. Someone's getting mm -hmm. set free. Someone's getting healed. Really? It always happens. Yes, really. Oh my gosh. Isn't it cool? And it's good. It's yeah. awesome. It's so cool. So it's not my fault. It's not, it's not my purpose. I was wondering what in the world. I, I know. <laughs> I sense that. It's not what in the world. It's what out of the world. Amen. <laughs> so this was happening. So cool. Well, that's great yeah. for this woman named C. I'll give you her, her first initial. I start speaking healing. Now. What I found with some cancers, and the Lord has shown me, not all, but a huge majority is it originated from cancerous thinking, cancerous belief system, and it becomes the body rebelling against uh, all against itself. And cancer begins to show up, okay? Eats away at the healthy body. Deep breath. Thank you, Jesus. So I began to speak love to her. Heart illuminated. Light was shine. She goes, and I hear, whew, 
I'm getting really hot, really hot. Yes, on the cancer. Is that what you're asking about, Crystal? Some of the cancers that I've been exposed to when I go get a word of knowledge is about its origin, its root is about cancerous thinking, cancerous belief system, and where we began to ruminate for this particular woman having an abuse history, her cancerous thinking, which became an inner vow, you understand that? We began to say things like, I'm trash. I'm, I'm so worthless. Uh, I hate myself. Why do I always? That's cancerous thinking. That's his language. Okay. Remember I said a majority, not all. Okay. We have to go in for a word of knowledge because there's also things about generational things. I'm not touching that right now. I'm talking about how we will host cancerous thinking, cancer, cancerous belief system. Now, you're going to love this, Cindy. This is going to make a lot of sense to you. The language and belief. This is in scripture. Okay. Proverbs 18.21 says what you speak with the tongue. <laughs> you receive its fruits. So she's having this interior dialogue that says, I hate myself. Um, I'm a product of the abuse that I went through at my father's hands. By the way, when a father abuses a, uh, a soul, other child, a lot of times that toxifies the definition of the father in heaven. You know, I've had it said to me before, um, people have asked me, well, why didn't the father who's supposed to love me so much not rescue me from that? Believe me, the father sent in many rescues, but we have a thing called free will. It's an irrevocable gift is what the Lord told me the other day. It's an irrevocable gift. So people in the world get to make choices. And what they expose themselves to influences their thoughts, words, and actions. Make sense? This is going to bear repeating. This is all being recorded, Cindy, so you'll be able to hear it again um, make sure I have your email. Just email me again. So you send me the recording. I'll add you in. Okay. Thank you. So now Proverbs 18 to 21. What you speak of the time you see its fruits. Can't say it enough. And then Proverbs 23, 7 says, as you believe in your heart, so shall you be. Okay. You guys know this, but are you living it? Is this your lifestyle? Are you coming into agreement with the lens and language of love? Triple L. That's a triple threat against the enemy. The lens and language of love. The lens, how you see things, forms your language and belief system. The language, how you speak about heaven, okay? The divine will. Are you dependent? Are you cooperating, collaborating with what he is saying? So as I spoke this upon the woman um, with the letter C, she began to get fiery hot. She get fiery hot. I go, oh. And of course, this sound, which I can't make start and stop. Hang on. I can't make it happen, Cindy, by the way. The little Holy Spirit just moves through me in that way. Mm -hmm. What I tell people is, look at the fruit. You'll know a tree by its fruit. Okay, don't look at Vicki Smith, please. Look at the fruit of what Jesus is doing, okay? So, now, as I spoke that, she got fiery hot. We spoke about supporting the language of heaven where's my i don't have a timing the language of heaven i'm good now the language of heaven and she radically had this shift in her spirit i could feel it the moment it happened because my heart kind of did this thing oh boom, boom, boom. that lets me know someone is receiving a heart healing do you know i can pray for the heart to be healed from the trauma and the cancer will go away mm -hmm. the cancer is only a symptom it's not the real issue. It's a it's a the symptomology of whatever the root of the infirmity is. Does that make sense? Sure, it's a reality. When you need to um, cooperate and work with doctors, absolutely. In Sirach, it says this plainly: we work with doctors, prayer, and uh, doctors, prayer, and also pray in the, oh, medicine. There you go. Doctors, medicine, and prayer. Okay. So very clearly, we have gifted doctors in this area. Some I've, I've actually, I know some who are emergency room doctors who's actually prayed over their patients in the ER. I can't divulge who that is, but I just know. So 
and there's fruit. There's fruit because why? The word is living and it's effective. So it's supposed to be fruit. When I prayed over C, there was fruit. She got hot. I heard a message in Tearly. I didn't even know it was a message. It was a prompting about listening to St. Charbel. She has St. Charbel. She's praying the novena. She just got the oil. She writes the next day. She says, I have slept better than I have in years. She added a comma and said, not that it was perfect, but hey, I'm going to take the first part and we're going to capitalize on where the, whether the truth, what the truth did in her mind, body, and spirit. So do you see how that was all teed up? The Lord opened the doors. She happened to listen to a radio program. Mine was a year ago. How she found mine, I don't know. But she was seeking. What happened is when you seek, you find. But that's a promise. And then the truth sets you free. So the Lord opened the door, closed the door. We shifted the language of the way in which she was thinking from away from cancer, which is his language. He's a cancerous presence, right? And as we spoke, functionality, healing, wisdom, joy, the intercession of the saints, the, uh, the novena, the power of the novena, which is the nine-day prayer, and there's healing. Do you guys remember my, my daughter Hannah, she's this big. You can't see, so I'm doing <laughs> well bigger than that. She had uh, spots all over her body, a skin disorder. I prayed a novena to St. Therese de Dieu. On the ninth day, my son opened the front door and there was rose petals all over the front porch. Oh. Uh -huh. So I didn't even put two and two together. <laughs> I have to say, that's my humanity. I'm driving around, but wow, it's so crazy that we have these rose petals. <laughs> I didn't think to like check Hannah. Later on the day, I go, oh, I need to check Hannah. Smooth to the touch, completely healed. Oh my gosh. Amen. That's wonderful. Sarah. Amen. Why do I share these testimonies? It's absolutely not to look at me or give glory to me at all. Yeah. It's about how present exactly. Jesus communion of saints and their intercession for us is powerful okay so we live with that power and what's the root of that power love love perfect love cast out here vicky vicky yes, ma may i add absolutely um i'm in a, a bible study at 7 15 on wednesday mornings and we call ourselves first light bible study and wow. we, we're we're it's the first light bible sisters and one of our sisters um, had an aneurysm in August. And while she was on the operating table, she had a stroke. And she's been struggling. I mean, it's been a long haul. She's been prayed over. And her birthday's in February. And she's been moved to a, a couple, three different rehab centers. And her heart's desire was that she be home in her own house by her birthday, which is the 24th of February. And, and so we've been praying for her healing. And, and I said, we need to ask the Lord specifically for enough healing for her to go home on her birthday. God's big enough to do that. So we prayed for that specifically that she'd be home on her birthday. She got moved to a, a, a new center in Fredericksburg earlier this month and praise god she is going home on the 10th of february her brother will come and live with her but that specific prayer i've got i've got god bombs all over me um that specific prayer was answered that she be able that she be because she has to be assessed to go home she just can't go home because she wants to go home she has to be far enough along in her process for the powers that be to say you can go home she is going home on the 10th of february Praise God. And so the moment she said uh, her birthday is on, I asked somebody here to start looking at the saint who has their feast day on the 24th and to, to have a novena begin. But also just don't forget St. Charbel, 29,000 reported medical and documented healings. Okay. So that is a great praise report. Do you see? And I would just say, you pray the prayer of enough healing to go home. I just pray it, it, it kind of at a total totality mindset is what I'm thinking. 
that she is healed and can go home in the name of Jesus. Because God is bigger than everything, right? And so we sometimes, I found it myself, I was convicted myself, uh, where the Lord said, um, why are you limiting my how much I can do and can't do? I was like, gee, I never thought about it that way. I really didn't. I just didn't want to bother you too much. <laughs> I mean, that's silly, right? But isn't that our humanity? So I'm sharing with you about Lord Mayor. Uh, sometimes people pray, have asked me to pray for um, a variety of things. I get everything under the sun, if you would say. And they go, can you pray that I have? They begin to put qualifiers on it. Can you put the qualifiers aside for a second? Unless Holy Spirit told you to put qualifiers on it. Let's be clear, we're led by the Holy Spirit. But put it there and say, may the divine will be done on her now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in agreement, usually you're praying with somebody else, in the name of Jesus Christ. For healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm making the sign of the cross. Now, um, her name is Marcy. Marcy. We're praying for Marcy. So, um, and remind me at the end, I want to make sure I include her. So, mm, getting God bumps all over me. Praise you, Jesus. Okay. Now, do you remember this? Some of you don't know this very short story, but I was ministering in Brazil with, to 10,500 people. Me and a, a large group is an ecumenical mission trip. A man was brought to me and he was like this. I, in my humanity, was intimidated in my humanity. God's not intimidated. I was intimidated by what I saw with my physical eyes. Where was my gaze, ladies and gents? My physical eyes on that person like this. Uh, I, it should be right here. But the Lord corrected me very quickly with one of our cute little spiritual spankings and reminded me that, um, that where's your gaze? I said, I've never, oh, here's my son. Can you see my handsome son? This is how, do you, when your kids leave, or your husband leaves, or any esposo, do you say, God bless you, with the mental of Mary, surround and protect you? Love you. And, and then when you get a little slap on the cheek and say, make good choices, just for a kick. Anyhow, uh, so. St. Matthias the Apostle. Okay, St. Matthias the Apostle, uh, Carol, for your friend. Okay, that's the feast day. Okay, keep that in mind. Oh, good. Yes, so I put it down. Diane. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> um, okay. So I, in my physical eyes, had my gaze on the physical person and it's the infirmity. That's not where the gaze needs to be. I said, gosh, interiorly, I've never prayed for an eight. It paralyzed me before. And I hear the Lord say, and that's a problem, Hal. <laughs> that was my, that was my <laughs> redirection to focus on that so then when i redirected and the light amplified i got a word that i was so, supposed to say in the name of jesus reach for the throne room of heaven i don't have to yell it i don't have to scream it the words themselves carry power so i said that in the name of jesus reach for the throne room of heaven so what was that now quickly we can all of you can pray for healing all of you every single one Okay, and the, you can, if you have the anointing, uh, the gift of healing, you can pray in that way. If you don't have the gift, but you have the gift of faith that Jesus can heal through faith. So don't worry about whether you have a gift, don't have a gift. That's not the issue. That Where's your gaze now? On who has what? Get your gaze back on him. That, on him. Operate in faith on he is who he says he is. And he said, in my name. Matthew 16, 17, Mark 16, 17, sorry, Mark 16, 17. These signs and these wonders are going to follow those who have faith. So in faith, I prayed, because I got the word, reach for the throne of heaven in the name of Jesus. No kidding. He was healed. I was like, Phew! Did you see what you just did? <laughs> I, mean, I was like so impressed. And and even the translator, she was like, and even the guy was like, we were all like, 
<laughs> you know, so it's so amazing, beautiful, and awesome to be there. And so giving God glory, what did I do? I prayed in faith. And so this is what happened. That was a fruit. What happened here? That woman had faith to reach out to me after listening to the radio show. She, she, you seek and find. What happened? We changed the language from the diagnosis language of cancer to the healed language of what he says he can do. It's actually not that hard. Sometimes what we do is we get a little bit tied up in the emotionality of, well, what if? Like when the first healing started happening in 1999, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. No one, I had no training. People were just getting healed when, the, when I prayed for them. God will take that. That's a mustard seed. And use that to glorify heaven. He does the work. You just trust. T-R-U-S-T. Trust. So that acronym I gave you guys before. Remember T R. A, Y, okay? Who knows what to do? Holy Spirit. So you press in, you rely, you abandon yourself, and you yield to the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's how got that word of knowledge reached for the throne room of heaven. I didn't have a word. I, typically, I began to plead the blood of Jesus over them in the name of Jesus, and I'm interiorly listening. If I'm interiorly listening, where's my gaze? On the light in the room. And then he does what he does. Because when you gaze, what happens? The light in the room amplifies. Hit it, Margie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's what happens. Okay, you Lord. Just a chat. Uh, thank you. More, 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 more. There. So you guys get it? You understand? That's so beautiful. And, and I love Carol's example about praying in that way. Carol is just a go-getter for souls. A lot of you, I know I'm looking at faces, go-getter for souls. You know, I was suffering for, before the conference just a bit with some pain issues. And I, I really needed to get going. Um, and Maria was staying at my house. She's online with us today. And I suffered through the night at, from starting at three in the morning. Okay, here's the point when I say things like this. God's available. He told me one time when he showed me a well and the cranker on the well, he says, you have constant access to this water. Constant. Okay, here's the thing. There was a few months ago in October, I gave a talk in San Antonio God, who is sovereign, started working on me, uh, Maria. She's in, listening online. Maria starts having the effects of being the light in the room, amplifying. I go, God is sovereign. He's working on you right now. I didn't know her at the time. The more I said that, she began to, aha. She felt more trusting, perhaps. God's working on me. And, and let loose even a little bit more. She began to yield. All of us want to yield. Okay, as she yielded, she began to rest the spirit, get up, rest the spirit, get up, rest the spirit, get up. Then the Lord connected us for more conversations about the lens and language of love, the lens and language of love, not letting fear be your decision maker. Okay, her environment shifted at her home as a result. At her home, the environment shifted. Like what I told one of my uh, friends, Bennett, move at the pace of peace. And she put it up in her in her house and she was got, trying to get her little son to chop up. And her son points and gives, hey mom, move at the pace of peace. I mean, so the environment shifts. Uh, <laughs> the environment shifts. And it's so beautiful because you will see a fruit. Why? Because the word of God is living and it's effective. That's why the environment shifts in her home. Now she's invited to the conference. God tells me he wants to use her for healing over, over people. Before she comes, she does pray over people in faith, and they're getting healed. Do you see? God's calling you also, Kathy Lucas. He's calling you also, Kelly Plate. All of you guys are missionaries. Crystal, you are also a missionary. All of you guys, Diane and Cindy and Rebecca and Kathy and Benet and Alyssa. 
and Laura, Robin, Yvonne, Trina, and Elsa, and the numbers 303406 That's you. You're being called as well. Yay. <laughs> That's what's so beautiful. You, Tina, in your ministry, being called. Your little missionary is going from place to place, seeing where he's planting you. Where he plants you, there's going to be a bloom because he's present. Can I give a little testimony on that? Yes, please. No, I just want to encourage the, the group also, just uh, when you were talking earlier on um, the uh, uh, busyness, the chaos, discord, and all that stuff, and the distraction, just even how um, on Friday I felt led to call Vicky to tell her a couple of things that were bothersome, and I felt like I had a big shift, I mean, on the spot about clarity and letting go of really stupid things, but that were really blinding me. The next day, a friend uh, that uh, has cancer, stage four, reached out to me, came to church on Sunday with me, was uh, the pastor called all the people that has stage four to come for prayer that day, Sunday morning. That's never happened. And she looked at me like, you talked to the pastor? I'm like, no, we did not. And she's coming for dinner tonight, <clears throat> her and her husband. And, and even all the teaching now is really prepared my heart for tonight. And um, But I, I think I wanted to pass the message to one another that sometime, um, you know, little things bugs us. And let's reach out to either Vicky or each other to clear to clear the confusion. Sometime on our own, we have a hard time to get out of that. So that was my word. Right. Thank you, Benet, for sharing that because that's fruit. And all we did, and Crystal, you're being called to do this too, is amplify the light in the room by speaking truth because truth says the cap is free. To finish up that story with Maria, she stayed in my home. She felt like, yes, uh, I feel like, you know, I am supposed to be praying for souls, but I'm just not confident in um, doing, uh, doing that yet. So because I was suffering upstairs and she was downstairs, I said, Lord, I, I need uh, and Maria come up here and pray for me. She prayed over me and um, just in faith, just I pray, I just pray over you in faith. I just pray over you in faith. And she's praying and praying and the pain lessens and lessens. And while she's praying for me, the Lord says, this was necessary, Vicki, so that Maria could see the effectiveness of her prayer. So he, it wasn't just about me and my experience. It's about also the usefulness, the inner networking that we all have. Do you see that? That's where we have the network of God's love. And he sends us out two by two. Um, someone who's on today, uh, Crystal, she and I, even through my fatigue, you know, because I was helping run the, uh, the, uh, the yes. whole the conference, it was, it was a mm -hmm. tremendous amount of work. Um, Did you get that? The, uh, I was really fatigued and wanted to go home, but something was telling me stay. I had a conversation with Crystal at, I think, 1 in the morning, 1, 1 30 in the morning, that had I left, I wouldn't have had. And there's even more to say about this, but I go short in that. We made a connection. I could see God's light in her, giving her words of knowledge, also that she has a gift of counsel. And that just to hear that affirmation in her uh, that God has planted her. So, so you see, every single one of you, every single one of you are called in ministry, operating in faith, trust, yielding to presence, recognizing the fingerprints of the enemy, recognizing the fingerprints of our Lord, coming into agreement over here, cooperate, collaborate. The woman C that I prayed for, she sought, she found, and it has a language and a belief system. How do you amplify the, the, uh, the gifts that you're working with? Keep training your gaze because he does it all. He does it all. All glory goes to him. Amen. So we don't let fear be our decision maker. We let love be the driving force because he who is love is using us. So as you train your gaze, if you get distracted, just return quickly. Just like a posture of holy indifference, I'm moving at the pace of peace and just go look in that direction. And there will 100% be a shift in your environment. 
we saw it here with Kelly's dad. Kelly was on with us. Some of you guys don't know. Kelly's dad was um, in the last stages, passing from this life to the next. As we prayed, the dad, who was not really too reactive or responsive to what was going on around him, all of a sudden sat and started clapping and looking at She's like, oh, I got to tell you what's going on here. She's with her dad who's passing from this life to the next. And that's what happened. Someone else who, who is on uh, in, in uh, Benny's company, I was praying over his wife who had cancer. And um, I actually cuddled up with her on her bed. I have an amazing, beautiful picture of us cuddling up together and praying. Afterwards, she had this like repentant heart and she was getting cleaned out. God was just totally cleaning her. And she had all this energy and she took a shower and she, she didn't look like she was passing from this life to the next at all. Lord was just downloading all this grace upon grace upon grace upon her. Do you see, just being present in love is, the, is what I'm sharing with you today. And he who is love. And in doing so, great, great fruit is going to bear forth. And guess what? When you have fruit, What's in fruit? Seeds. What's in seeds? More fruit. Fruits and seeds and seeds and fruit. Fruits and seeds and seeds and fruit. This is where healing, conversion, deliverance takes place. Also, sanctification, purification, edification, and unification takes place. This is all available to you. Constant access. Amen? Amen. Vicki, do you have one? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you have time for one more testimony? Yes, and then I'm going to pray for everybody, and then we'll plan our next our talk. All right, go ahead, Kathy. Um, it was a it was a one day prayer session that we had Sunday here in in uh, St. Louis, and I did not know about these prayer requests that had been going on, but there was someone that knew the people at the center, and they were asking for prayers for an 18 month old <clears throat> named Sienna, and. She was in the children's hospital. She'd been there for two weeks with an abscess on her lung and things were not looking good. Her grandfather went to um, the chapel on the rock in Arizona and prayed in front of that crucifix. And Vera, the very first time God talked to him and told him Sienna would be healed. At the same time, uh, somebody had had a vision and a clear picture of this, who this little girl was in her hospital room. And she saw the light over the little girl. And Jesus spoke to this person and said, tell her mom, she is healed. So between these people calling the mom or the little girl's grandfather calling the mom saying she's going to be healed. She's going to be healed. The woman asked the doctors at the hospital to run more tests and they wouldn't do it. And she had to really press for the test to be done. And they said, well, we'll do it, but it's not going to show anything different. When they ran the test, all of her abscess, her lungs were totally clear. Hallelujah. Praise yes. Jesus. Yes. God is good. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Do you see these testimonies? Sit with them and have this become your lifestyle, your language, your belief. And in doing so, you're going to see the miraculous occur. Absolutely, 100%. I'm not kidding because I've just seen too many. If you go to my um, healing testimonies page uh, on YouTube, you'll see so many people getting healed. I mean, legs growing out. Tumors disappearing. That was when I was with Randy Clark. Um, and, you know, paralysis, all these things. All of this is available to you. This is all the king using all of you as little missionaries to go and do his work, his hands and his feet. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this to a close unless anybody has uh, any questions. Yeah. Um, yes. Vicki, how do you... How do you pray to break or cast out a spirit of obstinance or stubbornness in someone? Yeah, so I'll, I'll answer the question, but I'll also say we've done this a lot of times on the upper room. So you can go and see if there's a title 
that draws you to it and kind of listen to that because we've talked about that before. But basically, I say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you're the one who opens the doors, no one can close, close the doors, no one can open. I thank you right now for opening up the door to uproot this spirit of obstinism wherever it came in. Because you might be seeing obstinism, obst sorry, with this little thing, I can't say that word, um, obstinism, obstinus, yes. thank you. And, but that may not be the root. You want to get to the root. So when we first received the gift of healing, if I saw like a pain here, I'd pray for that pain. And then I got taught later by a, a very gifted priest. Uh, the reason why that pain came back is he didn't go to the root. He got to get to the root. So he uproot the root. I don't have to know the name necessarily. Sometimes what I do is say, Holy Spirit, you name it. Right? I'm trusting the Holy Spirit yielding. Okay? And so we uproot that spirit from wherever it came in. Usually it's about a fear of something, typically. Word curses, um, inner vows. And you're seeing the symptom is obstinance, not necessarily the root. Does it make sense? So we uprooted oh. in the name of Jesus from wherever he came in, sent it immediately oh. directly to the foot of the cross. We've got to deal with that, he will, for eternity, causing the harm along the way, rendering it deaf, dumb, blind, mute, and impotent, with no power of retaliation, name of Jesus, bound there for all eternity. Then we, that's called a binding prayer. And then we do a loosening prayer. I loosen the godly opposite upon that soul. Spirit of peace, because what's the opposite of obstinate is peace. Peace, mm -hmm. wellness, joy, charity, mercy, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the supernatural peace of heaven from the throne room on high. Hallelujah. In the name of God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I watch for there to be fruit in this person, this soul, or whatever. And if there is a, <clears throat> the fruit that a peace, mercy, you know, something, a little shift, then we get more words of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. He will give you words of knowledge. That'll be a phrase, uh, some, something going on with your body, a discernment marker, like a pain here or there. I prayed for a priest who had emotional wounds. I got a pain in my heart. It led me to the emotional wounds that he was experiencing. He actually had a damaged heart, but it was from the symptom. Uh, it, the damaged heart was the symptom from all the abuse he had received earlier. See, see that's the, how it happens. Um, so anyway, I pray that this blesses you. I should make a recording about the binding and loosening prayer that, that's kind of coming to me right now. A lot of people have asked that for me before, from me before. Um, so also in ministry, just so you know, when you're in ministry, it's really important. After ministry, such as like a big conference retreat, or let's say you're doing an inter intervention, like with this soul. We thank our Lord for being present there. Thank you for the fruits for being present there. But we also sever any tie, tentacle, and attenuation of any spirit that may have tried to cling to us as, as a result of ministry. So I'm severing. It's called a cutting prayer. And I send it immediately directly to the foot of the cross, in the name of Jesus, same as we just did before. And now loosen the godly opposite upon us, in the name of Jesus. That's called a cutting prayer. So it's kind of like static cling, you know, little spirits try to do static cling like you would electric cling, like socks that cling on to you. They try to cling on to you just to pester you for the work that you've done. But it's super easy to take authority over them in the name of Jesus, send them to the, for the cross. God is bigger. We have to understand and trust God is bigger than all of this. Amen. All right. So we're also praying for, it uh, looks like uh, Laura, who's on the way to the doctor um, for healing respiratory illness and sadness. Um, Laura is such a beautiful soul. Um, don't forget the enemy will want to, she was here for the conference, will want to create a storm going home. I, I hear this from other people who go to these kinds of things. You go, oh my gosh, the storm happened. I was feeling so good. And then now the, what they're doing is they're talking the language of emotional hijacking. Who's fingerprints on that? That's mm -hmm. not of our Lord. So maybe we need to do a cutting prayer. Maybe we just need to spend some time in scripture. Maybe, how do you know what to do? You listen for a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. Okay. Or call one of any, any one of us who try to work together to get words of knowledge for each other. Okay. I pray that blesses you. So um, speaking of that, what I'm going to do, I have rosary. Can I see your rosary real quick? Rosary. Okay. So last tidbit, I was taking Father uh, Blunt to the 
to the airport in Denver. That gave us an hour and a half together. The entire time, we did not talk together. We prayed. He took his rosary. He said words of knowledge to cover Colorado, cover the children, cover uh, witchcraft, cover sexual perversion, cover marriages, cover, uh, and he just, and what he did was he took a decade and he said, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. We do an entire decade for that. Then he would go on to the next intention. Diane's holding that up where you can see that. Okay. Um, and we, we prayed that all the way. We prayed for an hour and a half. And we are breaking all kinds of bondage over Colorado. You can do that for your family. So what I'm doing, I have five yeah. people in my family. I'm doing one decade for my husband on the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Doing a decade for one of my sons. Decade for another son. Decade for another son. Decade for my daughter. Thank goodness I ran out of children because I ran out of decades. So, <laughs> but, um, but what I'm saying is that's how he went at it. And I, I, I can't tell you thousands and thousands of times we've said this and it's breaking it through the precious blood. Amen. Can I share something? Yes. Yes. On the can. way home on the airplane, and this was a divine appointment, there was a lady sitting next to me. She said that she was originally from Colorado, but that she had gone home to um, her mother had passed away and that she was going to be um, taking care of business with her sisters. Her sisters thought they were ready for, you know, dispersing whatever the mother had left and they were not. So she was there actually as ministry, but Come to find out she's in a deliverance ministry. She's not Catholic, but that doesn't matter. Right. She's doing, she's doing God's work. And she said that there is a headquarters uh, that Satan has in Colorado and that I wasn't aware of, but I knew there must be something because there was so much spiritual warfare against Father Blunt coming and the Campbells and, and this mighty powerful work that God wanted to do in Colorado so she just prayed with us and um, blessed our ministries and said to continue to fight the good fight and that she would be praying for us amen so it's pretty interesting that you say it because it just reminded me as father blunt and I were praying he held up his rosary like this and every once in a while he's just with this this jarring going on with him and we prayed over all of colorado can you see what he was this third time joshua thank you all over all of colorado and guess what happened a a uh what do you call it a volkswagen or a, what this long what are those wagoneers something like that station wagon station wagon station wagon whips in front of us it's full of dust and written in the dust is welcome to the hotel california and he goes, do you see what just happened? Do you see? He goes, that is a satanic headquarters right there. And the song goes, you can you can enter any time you like, but you can never leave. Never leave. Um, I thought I was like, he goes, you see that? You see that? I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I do. So it's 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 powerful. So we're going to. I, I'm conscious about the time and the time that you guys have committed to being here. If that's okay, um, we're going to just pray for Amy. Um, in the name of Jesus with uh, breast cancer, we're going to speak healing over her. Um, can all of us get perhaps the novena of St. Charbel? It's nine days. Yeah. You can send Josh a picture. Can you open your camera? Please? Oh, yeah. Um, so you can just go like this and you go like this. And then there you go. Um, thank you. My son needed something. Um, so where was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, the. Um, on the cancer. So we're going to speak life upon uh, healing because cancer eats away. So we're speaking life, which you eat away at it, right? And it's root system where it came in. So we're, we're praying for that in the name of Jesus. Um, Frank is dealing with some cancer issues in the skin. Uh, there's some discernment going on in Crystal's family that we're going to pray for healing uh, for. Uh, and also, yeah, we're praying against the um, the any temples that we see going on there uh, with the uh, abortions um, in the name of Jesus. Oh my gosh, that's why I don't sleep at night, man. Um, and so um, 
also who Kira was praying for. We continue to pray for her. We pray blessing upon Benet's meeting tonight that she's going to have. Um, and, uh, and also ex exponential healing upon Kathy in the name of Jesus. Exponential healing upon uh, Rebecca's family in the name of Jesus. Uh, Cindy's sister uh, and family. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. We pray for a good discernment and wellness upon Diana. She is helping her mom and also operating in ministry. We pray uh, for the deacon um, at Rebecca's church also in the name of Jesus. We speak over the litigation that Yvonne is working through in the name of Jesus. And all of you guys, also at Kathy's, um, Kathy Lucas's house, who she's ministering to in the name of Jesus. I'm getting God bumps. Something's happening for sure in the name of Jesus. And all other intentions uh, we pray for. So in the name of Jesus, we're just looking at, train your gaze right now, on the throne room of heaven. Lord, you're bigger than anything. Many of these issues going on with bodies, minds, hearts, souls, ministries, etc. You're bigger than all them. I just ask you to rend the heavens, pour down your graces. We have the expectation, which is our belief system, that you're you're sovereign over all of it. And we speak your sovereignty over every situation, mind, body, and spirit. So that we can glorify you in all that we think, feel, do, act, and say as we operate as your hand and feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Also, um, I've been invited to speak uh, at the end of uh, April. Um, in Albuquerque. You're all welcome to come, y'all. <laughs> and uh, um, so it's going to be a women's conference. And uh, I invite all of you, I can give you more details a little bit later as things solidify. Um, also, I'm praying for discernment on, I've been invited to go to Honduras as well. All as a result of people planting seeds, people planting a seed for, for me, just to see God's light. Hallelujah. And we, and so um, this is all for Jesus. Amen. All right, if you have any questions, write me. Um, so please do write me. And also, if you want to support the ministry, uh, I forget to do this, so thank you for the reminder. Um, if you want to support the ministry so that I can go do what I need to do for Jesus, you can make a love offering only if you feel called for the Holy Spirit to do it. There's no pressure here, okay? So PayPal uh, dot... Dot? No, it's forward slash me, isn't it? No. Yes? And the forward slash me. What is my what is my PayPal account? <laughs> do I know? Diane, do you know? Is it forward slash me? Let me look it up real quick, guys. Um, who knows my PayPal? Let me just do it real quick. Uh, PayPal, here we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay, paypal.me forward slash in one spirit 23. Okay, that's if you'd like to make a, a love offering. Um, again, only, only if you feel prompted. Um, so the other thing is there's something else. Oh, if you do make a, um, I'm going to just go ahead, go ahead and shut the recording off now. <laughs> 